Who all in the Star Wars galaxy knew the true fate of Anakin Skywalker and his rebirth as the Sith Lord Darth Vader? Greetings, students of the Force and Acolytes of the galaxy, and welcome back to the channel once again. These first two episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi have been riddled with many small details for us to expand upon, as well as many key scenes that a lot of fans were hoping to see. Spoiler warning ahead for the ending of the second episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi. At the end of episode 2, Reva had finally hunted down Kenobi by the cargo bay on the planet of Dayu, and with lightsaber in hand, began mocking him and attempting him to draw him into the light. It seems as though she was having some difficulty though, because although she could feel his presence in the Force, pinning him down was something else entirely. As we had seen in the show, Kenobi was struggling with his connection to the very Force itself, and as such, it is likely that his signature within the Force was also weakened. Due to this, Reva was continuously very close to Obi-Wan while throwing around the boxes, but never fully able to locate him. This is until she revealed one key secret, and one key fact to Obi-Wan that would ultimately reveal her to him in the Force. She was able to accomplish this through his sheer amount of paralyzing fear and regret. Reva revealed that Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker, was still alive. You could see it in Ben's eyes. The shock and horror of this prospect was like something in his worst nightmares. As we had seen earlier in the show that he had been carrying the baggage around for him in the past 10 years. The fact that he believed that he killed Anakin. Then, Reva said something that really caught our attention here at the channel. She name drops Anakin Skywalker directly and confirms to Obi-Wan that he is alive and that he is Darth Vader. Just to pour more salt on the aging Jedi's wound as she inched closer and closer to where he was hiding. We found these comments made by Reva incredibly intriguing as the previous comics and iterations of the Inquisitors never insinuated that they knew that Darth Vader was Anakin Skywalker. The fact that Anakin Skywalker was Lord Vader was typically a very close guarded secret by the Emperor himself. If word got out that a former Jedi was one of his primary leaders in the ranks of the Empire, it would cause a major discourse within the Empire itself and its leaders. More importantly though, we also know how Vader and Palpatine view the Inquisitors in general, which is not in a very favorable light at all, which may be why Reva is so focused on proving herself to Lord Vader. Vader found the group to be troublesome in that they got in his way, and the Emperor regarded them all as complete that disgraced their great empire as well as the dark side of the Force, due to their sheer incompetence with their single goal of hunting Jedi. So how could it be that Reva, and most likely potentially other Inquisitors by proxy, came across this information? Kenobi does explain to Leia that many, if not all of the Inquisitors were Jedi turned to hunt their own kind. Perhaps this was the show's way of telling us the answer. However, in other works, only a select handful of people in the entire galaxy knew of Vader's secret, and a very few Jedi ultimately knew of Vader's fate. We the audience were forewarned about the Kenobi show, and that there would be a few retcons within it and some minor canon re works, which, while confusing, is somewhat reasonable as the Star Wars mythos has grown and expanded so much larger, and is now a lot bigger than what was originally meant when the first Star Wars released way back in the day. So a few changes here and there will most likely be necessary for canon going forward, just to keep things to continue to make sense. Having said that, we wanted to list out everyone in canon who previously knew that Darth Vader was truly Anakin Skywalker, as the information is now more relevant than ever. So let's start at the most logical place. Let's start with the people that witnessed the fall of the Republic and Anakin Skywalker's turn firsthand. This would include Obi-Wan, Yoda, Bail Organa, and R2-D2. C-3PO knew of this information, but if you remember, Obi-Wan had C-3PO's memory wiped at the end of Revenge of the Sith. It is not known why they didn't wipe R2's memory, but it could be that they trusted a little astromech to keep his beeper shut about the whole thing rather than C-3PO. Nothing against 3PO, but that droid can have a big mouth when pressured. It also isn't known if Bail Organa's wife, Freya, actually knew the true fate of Anakin Skywalker, but the Kenobi show seems to indicate that she did know of Padme. It's unknown at this point in time though whether or not she knows of Anakin's involvement with the children. Of the remaining Jedi after Order 66, only three of them knew. First up, we have Master Farron Barr. Farron Barr was an Iktachi male fallen Jedi who sought to avenge the Jedi Order by overthrowing the Sith-ruled Galactic Empire. Despite his illustrious motives, Barr resorted to methods contrary to the Jedi Code, using the Force to control his followers and assassinating the Imperial Ambassador, Mon Cala. However, his actions ensured that Mon Calamari would 
ultimately join the Rebel Alliance, making him an essential part of the fight to restore democracy to the galaxy, despite his darker methods. Farron Barr was a Jedi general in the Clone Wars and did know about Anakin's fall to the dark side. He had gone into exile like all of the other Jedi that had managed to survive the Great Purge. However, he swiftly began training his own regiment of Jedi that he was going to use to lead against the Sith threat, becoming militarized almost instantly. He and his students would be found by Purge troopers ultimately, the Inquisitors, and of course, Lord Vader himself, whom Barr confronted in single combat. In the end though, Farron Barr would fall and Vader would rise, and Anakin's secret was temporarily buried with him. Among Barr's students, however, was a human woman named Verla, who was a knight that escaped the Jedi Order and began training under Barr as well. She had escaped the attack by the Empire on Mon Cala by manipulating the Purge Troopers into executing Order 66 on the very same Inquisitors that they rode with. Using this distraction, Verla managed to escape. Verla would go into hiding and many years later would directly meet Luke Skywalker. She was horrified to learn of his heritage, but after some time, the two grew close and he would go on to train her in his new Jedi Academy. The last three of the remaining Jedi to know about Anakin's fall was none other than Jocasta Nu, the Jedi Librarian. As Jocasta Nu had been present during the attack on the temple, she witnessed firsthand the young Skywalker cutting down Jedi. She had escaped with an armload of books, scrolls, and holocrons, and fled to a secret planet where she stored the treasure Jedi knowledge. She would eventually make a risky mission back to Coruscant in order to retrieve a holocron which contained data regarding the locations of all of the Force-sensitive children in the galaxy. Jocasta knew fled capture by the Grand Inquisitor, but was caught by a troop of stormtroopers. She revealed Vader's secret to the stormtroopers, which had the desired effect, as it drew enough discourse between them that she was able to manage another escape. However, these efforts would again be unrewarded, as Vader had gotten there too soon. The Dark Lord would personally execute the entire group of stormtroopers in order to preserve his secret. He would then move on to Jocasta Nu himself, killing her and his secret again fell with her. The remaining three that we know of never truly had it confirmed to them whether or not Anakin was in fact Vader, but they correctly deduced it by themselves. These three were Maul, Tarkin, and Thrawn. Maul had visions of the future of the seventh season of the Clone Wars. He saw the rise of the Empire, and he had been exposed to the truth by the Force, as well as Palpatine's plans for Anakin. Maul was so terrified by this prospect that he created an elaborate plan to lure Obi-Wan and Anakin back to Mandalore, where he intended on killing Anakin and denying the soon-to-be Emperor his prize. Unfortunately for Maul, though, it was Ahsoka who answered the call for help. Maul didn't play this particular mission out like a Sith Lord would. Instead, he openly revealed his plans and his vision to Ahsoka, and then asked her for help, offering his alliance. Ahsoka was even about to take it until she learned Maul's plan to kill Anakin. Blinded by her loving view of Anakin, Ahsoka rejected Maul's offer and shut down his plan. In his exile, it is likely that Maul knew that Vader was indeed Anakin based off of his visions and everything coming to fruition as he had foreseen it. The Age of the Jedi is over. Grand Moff Tarkin had deduced Vader's identity in the canon novel Tarkin. In the Clone Wars, the two of them fought side by side in the Republic, although they would continue to butt heads and have disagreements. They still, though, had a mutual respect for one another. In the end, although they didn't necessarily care for one another, they had mutual respect, and this got them a long ways. Both Anakin and Tarkin, and Vader and Tarkin, were working under conditions that wouldn't allow one to get rid of the other, so they had to make it work somehow. Tarkin had recognized the similarities between Anakin and Vader's fighting styles, and the way he commanded his stormtroopers. Tarkin, of course, knew back in the day that Anakin and the Chancellor were very close, so it could be that Vader and the Emperor were the same. Tarkin certainly thought so. One of the last people on our list is unsurprisingly Grand Admiral Thrawn. Just like Tarkin, Thrawn had previously worked with Anakin back in the day, and with Thrawn's superior intellect, it was probably nothing at all for him to make the deduction, and the deduction that Vader, within his first few interactions with him, was Anakin Skywalker. It was more or less confirmed to him by the fact that the Emperor granted him a full ride into the Imperial Navy, despite the fact that he was an alien. After Thrawn had name-dropped Anakin Skywalker in his meeting with Sidious when he was first captured, the slight tip in the Emperor's hand was all that Thrawn's brilliant mind needed to know exactly what he had suspected. Anakin Skywalker was in fact Darth Vader. We also know, of course, that Bail Organa likely suspects that Anakin and Darth Vader are one and the same, especially after the events of Kenobi. 
However, it's unlikely that he knows this during the events of Kenobi. It's also likely that Grandmaster Yoda knows of the true fate of Anakin, although again the timeline of when he learned this is unknown. However, it's likely that he could have known this even before Obi-Wan. As in the Obi-Wan series, we learn that Obi-Wan has temporarily cut himself off from the gifts of the Force, and to our current knowledge, we know that this is something that Yoda has not yet done. But anyway, that is the list. So for Reva to know is actually quite surprising, as there's only a very, very small handful of people that knew the true fate of Anakin Skywalker, that including some lucky Jedi Padawans, which of course makes sense for Reva to know, some Jedi Masters, as some very high-ranking Imperials as well. Basically, you had to be one of the most intelligent beings in the galaxy to figure it out, or have basically been lucky enough to find out by chance. Anyway, my friends, what did you guys think of this, and what do you think of the very few amount of people that actually knew the true fate of Skywalker? Thank you as always so much for watching, hit that subscribe button, and may the force be with you.